It's when it comes to slow cooking, it can be so convenient, but we want to do it right. Our local expert talked with Holly Menino and gave her some great tips when it comes to slow cooking. I'm here with Karen Peterson, and we are talking crock pot cooking. So, yes. Karen, you've got a great book out. You've got another one coming out in March. What's yes. your blog? My blog is 365daysofcrockpot.com. Okay, so you are so, a crock yes. pot expert. Yes. What are some <laughs> tips we're going to get to learn today to okay. help us cook crock pot wise? Yeah, more these are just some of the things that I've learned over the, f the years that I've been mm -hmm. doing my blog. Um, the first thing is a lot of people ask me, what kind of slow cooker do you have? What should I buy? And now I have 10 different slow cookers. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so, okay, I am a novice. I have one. <laughs> That's okay. And it doesn't even look this complex right yeah. here. Well, it's, it doesn't have to be complex. That's the thing. People should say, what kind of gadgets do I need? And all this. Yeah. I, I, have, I have just the plain of plainest and then the ones that do have the gadgets. And I don't oh, wow. think it really matters. Okay. It just matters on what you need it for. Now, you work, so you might want one that has a timer on it. Yes. Right? Yes. Okay. And I don't have a timer. And that would help, definitely, yes. if I did. Yes. You get one like this that has a timer and it automatically switches okay. to warm after eight hours right. or whatever you set okay. it for. Okay. That's one thing. The other thing that I like to tell people is buy the size that you need for your family. Now, this is a six quart. You can mm -hmm. see it's pretty big. Now, I only have, oh, it's not that clean inside, but oh, well, well, that's it. okay. It's getting good use out of it. That's so right. It's well used. So, okay. So, this is a six quart. Now, for my family, my family, I have two little kids and my husband. Mm -hmm. So, I would use a three quart on a day to day basis. Okay. When cooking for a crowd, I would use one this size. Okay. Yeah. And I don't even know what size mine is. Yeah. I mean, it's not this big, it's more of the round one. Yeah. So, okay. So, and that's the other thing. I like the oval just because it does fit odd cuts of meat. Like, if right. you have a roast that's like this size, it's not going to fit in that round one very no, well. No, and it doesn't. Yeah. That's I why I do that, like so. the oval size. Mm, that so, that's sense. another thing to consider when you're buying one. Um, they all cook so differently. All of mine cook different heats. They cook, you know, some cook slower, some cook faster. So, you're just going to want to get to know the slow cooker you have and adjust the recipes mm -hmm. accordingly. Right. And for you, yeah. with 10 different slow cookers, yeah. you do all kinds yeah. of different things with each one. Exactly. So, okay. What's our next tip? Okay. So, the next tip that I have is, okay, so like I said, you're going to want to buy one for the size of your family. Mm -hmm. Now, let's say you just want, if you just have a big one, you don't have room to get another one, you don't want to buy another one. But sometimes you cook for a large group on the weekends, but during the week it's just you and your husband or whatever. Get a little dish oh, like this. Corningware. Yeah. yeah. It's an oven safe dish, mm -hmm. a Pyrex corningware, and it fits right inside. So what you're going to do is you're going to, when you're just cooking for two or three, you're going to load the ingredients in here. And then so you can on. slow cook a pot inside the crock pot. Right. And that will no make idea. the wow. recipe cook the way it's supposed to. Okay. If you don't use this and you're only cooking for two people, it's going to cook way too fast. Right. Yeah. And then you're going to get it burnt up on the side. Yeah. Okay, see, I've yes. done that before. I yes. should have used that little yes. my little corningware that I have. Okay. So that's the second tip. The third tip is using a dryer sheet to clean. Sometimes it gets mm. really crusty, like you said, yes. on the edges. Have you noticed that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah just have so, sometimes when it's just like so hard and you can't scrub it off, fill it up with warm, soapy water and put a dryer sheet in it. Okay. Let wow. it soak for a few minutes. And for some reason, the dryer sheet kind of gets the wow. crusty off. Huh. Like it helps release something. Okay. I don't know. And then do you need to like <laughs> scrub with the dryer yeah. sheet around then, the edges? Then I just use it and I just scrub right around the edges and it kind of gets oh, the wow. crustiness okay. off. Okay. That is yeah. a great tip. Yeah. yeah. That was wow. a cool one that I learned. Okay, the third one is a lot of times things get really, really runny in the slow cooker because when you're cooking, this lid is right on top. Mm -hmm. All the uh, condensation hits the top of the lid and drips right back down right. onto your food. Yes. So what you're going to want to do is use some sort of thickener. Um, I like tapioca. Uh, it's, it, tapioca is um, doesn't taste like anything. You can't tell that it's there. It's pretty inexpensive. So just use this on what, whatever yeah. cooking like in the Yeah, like let's say you're cooker. doing um, chicken and barbecue sauce, but the barbecue, barbecue sauce is just really runny by the time mm -hmm. you're done. Put a tablespoon of this in with the barbecue okay, sauce. Okay, and it will thicken it up yeah. a little bit. Yeah, okay. Or you can always dredge in flour, but I like tapioca yeah, better. Yeah, good idea. And what's yeah. our last tip? The last tip is baking in the slow cooker. A lot of people don't know. You can actually make banana bread or a dessert like a peach cobbler or something like that. When I do something like that, I like to put a little rack mm -hmm. right in the bottom. Put your banana bread on top so that the air Baking can circulate right underneath. There. Then, just like we talked about, the condensation, we don't want it to drip onto our banana no. bread and get it mushy. Okay, so, paper so we're going to put two, two paper towels wow. over the top. Okay. There you go. Karen, amazing. This has just opened up a whole new world <laughs> of slow cooking Thanks. for me. Okay, great tips. Thanks yeah. so much, and we'll be right back.